the legislative processes for domestication of international conventions. However, the Attorney General of the Federation maintains that the law is constitutionally supported in the fight against corruption. During the proceedings, the court granted the request of three states, Anambra, Eboni, and Adamawa, to withdraw from the suit. Kogi State's Attorney General is also seeking a declaration that the EFCC and other federal agencies lack the authority to interfere with state funds. To discuss with me this morning is Elvis Asia, who is a legal practitioner. Good morning and welcome to the program, Elvis. Good morning. Thank you for having me on the program. Okay, I'm, I'm just curious. Um, on the one hand, the, the states that are against EFCC and other agencies are saying that uh, the, the Establishment Act for these agencies uh, was not correctly done. And the Attorney General of the Federation is saying that everything is constitutional. Uh, but what, where do you stand in this? Uh, well, I, 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 let me say that, um, like you said, matter has not been adjourned for uh, judgment by the Supreme Court. Uh, so uh, we have to wait for the Supreme Court to decide uh, the constitutionality or otherwise of these uh, enactments that is being challenged by the states. Uh, but uh, this is not the first time that the states have uh, sought to challenge the constitutionality of, the, of these acts. Uh, there are a few cases where the Supreme Court has made a decision uh, with respect to the constitutionality of the FCC Act, uh, as well as the ICBC Act. Uh, but this time around, it appears that the states, in a bit to obviously uh, you know, continue to uh, do whatever they want to do with state funds without questioning. Uh, they have come up with another argument this time around to say that uh, Section 12 of the Constitution uh, does not give backing for this enactment because they are said to be made pursuant to uh, the United Nations Convention. And by, the, by Section 12 of the Constitution, those conventions must be domesticated uh, in the manner set out by that provision, which uh, pretty much also means that the states will have to have impute in the process. Um, what I would say, um, I think the issue before the Supreme Court is, um, is, I mean, if you look at the EFCC Act, for example, was enacted first in 2000, 2002, yes, during the administration of the Ocean of Abbas and and it was in 2002. And the convention that they are, relying, they are talking about uh, was made uh, sometime in 2003, a year after. So I do not know, uh, you know, Supreme Court will be, obviously we have to look at that to see whether there's any merit in that. Because, uh, like I said, the convention came after the EFCC Act and even the ICPC Act. But beyond that, if you look at the Act itself, I, I, I have, I, there's no provision in the Act that gives any indication that they are meant to implement uh, any convention. It is not so... It's, it's purely an announcement of the National Assembly on issues of corruption, economic and financial crimes. So um, the National Assembly did not indicate in that legislation or in those legislations that they intended to uh, domesticate an international convention which would require compliance with Section 12 of the 1999 Constitution. And, and again, another issue that is also um, very uh, important is that you know, uh, corruption is a matter that falls within the fundamental objectives and direct, directed principles of state policy um, under, I think, Section 14, 15, and thereabouts of the Constitution. And if you look at the exclusive list of the National Constitution, Constitution, um, in order to bring to life, to make it enforceable, only the National Assembly has the power to make a law. And so these laws, you know, uh, uh, you know appear to have been made in that regard, like the Supreme Court has in, uh, in the past um, uh, had, you know. So, um, so those are some of the issues that will be for the Supreme Court want to decide. Another thing, again, is that, you know, why are the states making these arguments? Is it because they, they are now defenders of the Constitution? Obviously, no. They are, they've, never been, they've never been interested in the Constitution. What they're interested in, essentially, right now is to make sure that they, they continue to be unquestionable, to, that they are unaccountable, and uh, you know, they continue to uh, uh, personalize the funds of, of the states. And I think that is what this issue is. And so, and I think the Supreme Court will 
you know, um, look at all of this according to a determination. And I think I also feel, you know, as a matter as, as a legal practitioner, is that what really is a dispute? The Supreme Court, if you are challenging an enactment made by the National Assembly, I don't think the, you should go straight to the Supreme Court to do that. I don't see the dispute between the states and the federal government with respect to um, the operations of the, of the EFCC or ICBC Act. So if you have any particular, in any particular case, you want to challenge the constitutionality of the Act, I thought that perhaps you should approach the appropriate court and not the Supreme Court. So it, I, I believe these are some of the issues that the Supreme Court will have to decide. And um, I'm sure in the next few weeks or months, we would hear the final say of the Supreme Court on the matter. It's just curious that it's the Kogi state government uh, that is uh, the, at, the, at the fore of this pursuit. And we don't know the aims that they want to achieve. Uh, like you said, maybe it's not just to defend the constitution, but it's for their personal gains and all that. Uh, but we seem to be quiet about it. What will, what will Nigeria be like without an EFCC or ICPC or these anti-graft agencies that are fighting corruption? Just, just paint a picture of what you think our Nigeria will be like, aside from whether it is constitutional or not. Well, quite frankly, I, I don't even know whether the EFCC or ICPC has done enough to um, you know, prevent corruption only in the country. Um, I, I think we are even more corrupt now than when the EFCC Act and the ICPC Act were enacted. Uh, so I don't even think the question is whether or not uh, the country is going to be more corrupt or not. I don't think that is the question at all. Uh, like I said, I uh, firmly believe that Nigeria was better off in 1999, 2003, um, during the period when the EFCC Act and the, the ICPC Act were enacted. So I don't know whether the corruption index, because what has happened since then is that the EFCC has dabbled into so many things that they have no business with. Uh, the EFCC, for example, is supposed to be a, special, a specialist uh, a, a security agency uh, that, should, that should focus on money laundry, serious money laundry that has economic implications for Nigeria. Uh, not to be doing uh, recovery of uh, uh, loans, um, you know, in some, some cases, property, you know, and, and all of that that they are doing now. So they have gone outside of the mandate or the intention uh, behind the enactment of the act. And that has made the EFCC uh, grossly ineffective and unable to address serious issues of corruption and financial crimes in the country. And so um, you know, the, the, those who, uh, who those who have their way in the country have continued to um, be able to avoid uh, the EFCC because of the fact that, you know, they, they are not only focusing on what they are supposed to be doing. And in the process, they have, uh, they have allowed people to uh, play games with them, like we are seeing with the Kogi State um, uh, uh, government. But I do understand the point you are making because, you know, there is no state, there is no state where any security agency has arrested any government official for corruption. I stand to be corrected. I'm not aware that in any state, you know, uh, with the Lagos, all the other states of the Federation, I'm not aware that any security agency has taken up any case uh, that borders of corruption or crime at the state level. So it is very, very uh, germane to ask the question whether there will be any attempt made to fight corruption in the absence of the EFCC and the ICPC Act at the state level. And so, uh, you know, you are right in that regard. Because, you know, I mean, at the state level, you, they, they are, there are criminal legislations on ID that should even, uh, uh, that, that can be applied by the Attorney General of the states uh, to prosecute for corruption, prosecute for uh, malfeasance and, and, you know, some uh, financial crimes and all of that that are provided for in the criminal legislation. But no, nobody, no, not the permanent secretary, not the, not the alliance governor, not the, uh, um, you know, not an, no office, or officer of any state, to my knowledge, has been, is being prosecuted at the state level for anything that has to do with um, mismanagement of funds at that level. And so uh, the, it is very genuine to uh, worry that when you not take out the ESCC, irrespective of their, 
the current realities of, you know, the fact that they're not really doing well enough, please, we still have a semblance of an attempt being made. Uh, so the way you not take it out completely, it's really just simply means that the states will have a fee day. You know, they pocket the funds of the state, like you have no local government funds all over the over the, over the years. Nothing is this nothing is going here at local government level. Um, and so they just continue to and that's really the goal of these kind of actions uh, that you know are being fired. And of course, look at you know the, the timing of the action. It's it's, it's coming at a time when um, attempts is being made by the FCC to question uh, the financial management of Kogi state funds uh, by the former governor of, of the state. And so um, at the state level, there will be zero uh, resistance to corruption. And so uh, as bad as EFCC and ICPC um, you know, currently is or currently are, you know, we still need them uh, you know, to put on this. We just need to restructure the system, the, the, the operations to serve the nation better in terms of fighting corruption. Yeah, but um, now the, the states, or should I say the governors, are fighting EFCC, ICPC, and using constitution as a, an excuse to say they should be scrapped or something else should be done about them. Uh, and it seems like uh, the legal minds and everybody is just keeping quiet. And if we know that scrapping EFCC and other anti-graft agencies is going to be detrimental to Nigeria, in spite of their shortcomings and all that, uh, then why is nobody talking? What if this case goes on and it's the governors, not the states? Because if my governor is against it, I'm not sure it's the people that are against it. It's the governor, and for whatever reason, he's talking about it. So. Can the people do something about it? Why are the people who should be talking uh, on the side of uh, the ordinary citizens n very quiet about it and letting the governors have a field day, as it were? Well, I mean, the, the people have the powers to do something about governance generally in the country. And one way they do that is regular uh, election that is conducted across the country. So when you are... Uh, so when you see that a particular governor has mismanaged the funds of the state, then you deny that governor of re-election using a ballot, ballot box. Uh, you use the ballot, the, the ballot box. Uh, there are other avenues available. You You're speaking test, like you have you absolute confidence. You, can, well, you, you have speaking like you have absolute confidence in our electoral system, where you, you see the local government uh, election, for instance, every state, um, the only people that win in that state are the people who belong to the party of the governor. If it is 23 local governments, all 23 will be won by the governor's party. And it doesn't look like there is free and fair election going on anywhere in Nigeria. So if you say the people have the right to vote and remove the person they don't like and vote in the person they like, I don't know. Even the presidential election, if you had so much, uh, so much uh, confidence in it, so what are other, let's leave election, what are other, other avenues to explore to see that good governance is achieved in Nigeria? Because even the bad governance uh, protests, there were people who were protesting for bad governance while others were protesting against bad governance. So where are we now? We are on a crossroad. I mean, I agree with you that we are on a crossroad, but I, I insist that, you know, um, the people who have taken the country hostage Either at the federal or state level, are just a few people. Uh, if the people decide to insist on their rights, um, you know, there's much, you know, at some point, you know, sacrifices will have to be made. People are afraid of being arrested. People are afraid of, you know, go and look at any country where, you know, that has gone through what we are going through now. There, there, were, there, was, there were periods of struggle by the people uh, to ensure that there's fairness in, uh, in, in, in governance. And to ensure that the people who are elected uh, to govern, you know, do uh, their jobs, you know, um, we must continue. And there's a limit to, uh, you know, the, the fact the fact that they can't press us. Uh, it simply means that we have given them the power. They can't. They, 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 they have to how, how many? To what extent can they really oppress the people? They, they, you know, if the people do not um, agree, whether expressly or impliedly in the way or manner we, we conduct ourselves. So, yes, you, you know, the, the electoral process is, is, is poor as, as, as it is right now. Again, it's because after elections, we don't even follow up. We don't follow up with our, with our local governments, for example, to, 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 to find out what they're doing with whatever phone that they have. Our rules and local government levels are very are poor. Nobody's talking about it. 
nobody's doing anything about it. There are no protests at the local government secretariat. You know, uh, the local government chairmen are from our communities. The people in government are from our communities. Why are we not doing anything about it? We are giving them chiefs, chiefs, chiefs titles in some places. We are celebrating them in churches and, uh, and mosques in many other places. And so when you do that, you are, you are, you are telling them that they are doing well. And so they will continue to, to do that. If there is resistance, you know, especially in form of protest or impliedly that we do not condone their actions, a local government chairman from a community, for example, who is not doing well, is ostracized, the people don't want to identify with him, can tell you for free that, you know, they will eventually uh, uh, sit up. The, 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 the governance we are getting is a reflection of, of the people. You speak to every Nigerian on the street, and they tell you that you know when they have the opportunity, they want to do the same thing, or worse, or worse, or worse than that. And so you know, it, it, everything comes down to the people, and the people must insist. You must do you do so by right, by by right. at the local government level. You, you go to some countries, for example, you find that you have groups, you know, civil society trying to hold <coughs> government accountable at local levels. Forget the governors, forget the president. What, about, what happens to the uh, member of the House of Assembly who is from your community? What happens to um, uh, the local member chairman who is from your community? <coughs> what happens to the councillor? These people must be held accountable by the way of manner they are, they, they are, they, the, the people interact with them. Can't be giving chances that to somebody you know, who is not doing well. What do you expect the person to think? You would think he's a, he's a, he's a savior. You cannot be celebrating people in churches and malls and in groups you know, who are not doing well. And that's why we are what we are. So the people must, you know, go beyond. Yes, election, you know, we have we, we have issues with it. We also we have issues with it again because of you know the general attitude of the people. We must begin to look beyond just survivor, making money for ourselves as a people. We must begin to find ways to you know be involved in our local communities. We can force local government chairman to do their job. You know, um, I'll give you an example. You know, um, you know as I speak to you now, we're planning. Uh, to install action against my, my local government chairman because there are no rules to my village anymore. And so I want to ask questions. What has happened to the budget over the years that were, that, that were meant for, you know, you know uh, road, uh, construction of, uh, uh, of, of grading of, of, of feeder roads that leads to my village? And so we don't, we don't do that. And right. when we continue to do that, this, the, the, the society becomes uh, incom in, you know, not comfortable for people who are just stealing and taking money for themselves. Okay. Uh, well, uh, as a person, I hope the governors don't win. I hope that the discussion will move from scrapping EFCC and ICPC to how to make it better and more effective to carry out the functions they're supposed to, uh, to carry out. Uh, but that is where we are right now. And only I, 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 doubt, I, doubt, I doubt they will, they will be able to win, um, you know, because what, whatever uh, they are trying to handle the Constitution, because they don't support what they're doing. Whatever it is, uh, but that's my hope. Uh, well, uh, but at this point, this is where we, we have to drop it. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Elvis, for coming on the show. Um, it's always uh, uh, eye opening if you come on the show and uh, discuss some things with us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. We've been talking with Elvis Asia, legal practitioner, and we're looking at the fact that some governors or some states are now uh, talking about the scrapping of EFCC because, according to them, the laws that established EFCC were not properly followed. Okay, we'll take a short break, and when we return, empowering women is what we'll be looking at, and we'll be concentrating on WIMBY's Conference 2024 uh, with theme, Dream, Dare, Do, the three Ds as I call them. Stay with us.